What's good, people? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Dope and Damage podcast. Thank you for tuning in wherever you're tuning in from. And thanks for all the comments, the subscribers, the shares, the likes, the follows, and the listens all over all streaming platforms and, of course, on YouTube and social media. So, yes, of course, today I have a very interesting guest. I can't wait to get into this episode today because she really has a story. Um, My guest today goes by the name of Angela. Angela, welcome to the show. Thank you for having time or making time for us. <laughs> Thank you for having me as a guest. I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So you want to tell people a little bit about yourself? I'm a single mom of a 25-year-old autistic son. I'm an entrepreneur, newly entrepreneur, because um, he graduated school back in 2020. And I am a newly author and trying to get my business and life together something simple. <laughs> <laughs> That's a simple, but we're going to unpack. So let's start with your newly entrepreneurship, with your new business. What is it? What is it that you do? And when did you start? I really recently started, um, I'm going to say May 16th when I got on the clubhouse. It's a new app that we have on, um, on in, 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 um, the United States. And I don't know if you have it. In, in, it's a clubhouse uh, app on the game's play store. Oh yeah, and people know I, the app is everywhere. In, yeah. Okay, I didn't know. I, I wasn't too sure about it. No, no, um, no. So I went on there for, pub, for for personal development, and I received a couple of summit speaker events, and ended up writing a book. And here I am. And that was just, since May 16th, so almost a year now. Wow. So it, 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 so you felt the need to have, um, to basically do some self-improvement and work on yourself. Yes. 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 Um, raising my son by myself, I just was, uh, I stuck on just getting him out of school. So I turned everything off in the world. When he graduated out of school, but during the pandemic, in 2020, well, 2019, 2020, I lost all control. I didn't know what to do, um, what I was going to, what I was going to do. My plan that I had set for him, it went down, down, down the rabbit hole. So I had to rethink everything after the pandemic, slow down, and to rethink what can, what can we both do? Because I wasn't going to send him out into the world to get sick, to come home, or me go out in the world and get come sick and get and come home. So. I have to rethink of a home-based business. So what was the plan you had for him? So uh, raising an autistic son, maybe we should start there. Raising an autistic son alone, I can just imagine how many challenges it brings. 20, he's, he's 25 now. He was uh, diagnosed when he was three years old. So 22 years of having a child, then having a child with autism was like, explosion. Um, I had many challenges. Uh, we even did medicine regimen, which I'm not too keen on, but it happened. Um, as of last November, Thanksgiving time, I, um, me and the doctor together decided to take him off the medication so that I'm able to see what he's like without the medication, the way I should have seen him 25 years ago. So that's why we, we're not vaccinated. Um, I don't trust the CDC or anything else um, is a bad taste in my mouth. Let's put it that way. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) And talk to me a little bit um, about the plan you had for him and why it didn't work out. Was it because of the pandemic? Yes. The plan that I had for him was after he got out of high school in June, we was going to take a break from each other. He's going to go somewhere for a week. I was going to go somewhere for a week by ourselves. Um, I had it all planned out. I had a cruise um, reserved for me by myself for the first time. And I was going to take him one one after the fact. I was going to have him go to my, my sister's or my girlfriend's, um, our, our personal here, PCA, who takes care of him, and have them do with him for a week and me go away for a week. And we just we set our brains, but the pandemic came in and like washed it all away. I had him, I was going to have him set up with the transitioning housing 
where he can go somewhere else to live without me because he's been with me for 25 years. So that was the plan to go outside of the house now because of the pandemic and they want him to be vaccinated or tested. He doesn't like needles, doesn't like loud noises and doesn't like changing his routine, but it was gonna, I was gonna try and get it into his routine to go somewhere else, but it, I don't trust it now. Even now that that everything is a little bit more open? Um, No, I don't trust it at all. No. Um, Throughout the 22 years of of, of, of raising him, it was just like a lot of, I was getting a lot of lies. And to me, they sounded like they were the right thing to do. And as I look back on it, it really wasn't because I wasn't focused. I wasn't focused on getting him out of school. So everything else was just in the back burner. And I'm like, well, now you're bringing the truth to me. You should have brought the truth to me back then. Now I'm getting it now. And it's like, I don't know what to believe, how to believe, and what to trust, who to trust. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Tell us a little bit about the challenges that you had to face these 25 years and those that you're still facing up to now. Like, what, what do you think was the hardest when he was a kid um, coming a teenager and then a young adult? Um, for the first part was getting him into school. Um, we had to, he was used to going to two schools a day down to one school without a transitioning plan. So we went from two schools a day on Friday and then on, it was a holiday on Monday and that Tuesday he started his first year in public school, which was a one school um, place. Um, he's used to, like I said, routine is, is, is their main thing. And he went in on the first day. I had to drive, actually, let me go back up. When he started school, I had my first foot surgery. So I, I have crutches, I have a bad foot, and he had to start school on Tuesday. So I had to get a cab from my mom's house to the new school. I didn't know where the school was. I had no information, but over the weekend, and I was researching all over, so I knew where, I had to find out where it was at. I took him to school, and he got came home on the school bus. Now, after that week, he, every time he goes to school, I would get a phone call. He's rambunctious. He's jumping off the things. He's, hurt, he's hurting himself. He's endangering others. I got that for a full month, and I got tired of it, so I took him out of school for two months. I took him out of school for two months and then um, I brought him back in to the emergency IEP meeting to tell them he's not used to going to one school a day. So what happened was I thought about it over the two months he was out. It was talking about humans to me because he wasn't in school. I didn't know what to do. I thought they knew what to do because they're professionals. I'm not. This is my first child. So what I did was, well, let's do it like this. I'll send him to school. And I'll come get him at 12 o'clock noon. That's the time he's used to going from one school to the other school. After a couple of days, I added on an hour until he got fully um, acclimated to regular school day. Uh, from not from seven, it was from eight to eight to three. And by them listening to me, finally we got a plan. And ever since then, he loves going to school. Wow. Teen, um, yeah, teenage years, we were okay in teenage years, um, except for we had a mishap in the school. They had him in the wrong setting for six years. Um, I only found that out because we had a bus situation. He was getting bus to school, and the bus was running late, um, Not no shows, and it made him sad. When he's off schedule, it changes his mind, and it it, it, it how can I put it? It takes him off his schedule. When he gets off his routine schedule, he gets rambunctious and I catch it. They don't catch it. I catch the, the, the repercussions of it. Yeah. Whether it's a day, the nighttime or the day or the weekend. So what had happened was I, what happened was I took my phone, my cell phone. Um, and that's the only reason why I have a cell phone too. I didn't say that before. The reason why I have a cell phone because of, of so I can get out the house. I was trapped in my house. So the cell phone, I said, well, let me just text myself the time the bus actually comes, push send, made a, mem- a memo of it, took it to a lawyer's, 
they said you have more than a bus situation. They took a look at his IEP and said he was in the wrong setting for six years. How is it possible that it's for six years and nobody found out? And I'm not saying you, but I mean the school people. It's money. Whenever a special needs child sits in the seat, they get funding for that child, Uh supposedly. And they use it for the child and whatever's left over, it some kind of way gets somewhere, goes deposited somewhere else. So they use a little bit for the child and the rest goes to the school. I found that out because I saw what happened with my son and who knows how many others they are, they're, they're doing this to. So this whole life thing is about money. I'm not about money. Yes, I can use it, but I'm not about money. I'm about just living life the way I was supposed to and I did. And this is what we get. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. This is a lot. Like, how did you deal with it emotionally, mentally? What was, what kept you going? My mustard see the faith that God gave me. Uh, my mother told me before I had my son and all through my, my younger years, if you lay my birds and the bees, Spill was if you lay down to have a child, you must take responsibility of that child. And that's all I got. Now, how the kids come around, how you make kids, now how you, girls and boys get together, no, that's what I got. And I got my, um, I guess, how, how kids come, come about through my health, my health class at school, which was nothing. So I was stuck, my brain and God, and prayed so many times. I know he's tired of me, but. I'm his best friend <laughs> right now. <laughs> and with, <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I mean, this is this is like a lot because, um, of course, I mean, he goes to school, you go to work, or you have some time for yourself. However, mm-hmm. it's like a 24-7 job because you have to be available if school calls to pick him up because something went wrong or so. And I just want to say, that you're absolutely amazing. And I, I am inspired by women who, you know, manage these type of struggles and, you know, like put themselves, you know, and put their, 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 their child before themselves and everything, you know, and you did that for years. And at one time where you were supposed to go on that cruise, this damn pandemic comes. I was destroyed. I was like the first time I put it on paper, and this is the first time everybody, everybody told me to write things down, write things down. You might forget it. Okay, okay, all right. I bypassed all that, got through it, and I wrote this down. And it was a actually it was a free cruise that I was going on. I just had to pay the, the the taxes and the other fees that I needed for that. That's how bad I wanted to go. And when it, the pandemic came, I was like, well, I pushed it back a year because it was supposed to be two thousand. 20, 2020 and then I pushed it back to 2021 and then we went back to full-blown pandemic mode so I'm like well I'm not taking any chances with or without then they had made re- re- restrictions that you had to be either vaccinated or a negative COVID test I did the COVID test once didn't like what I liked and I wasn't getting it for him because he wasn't going to sit there and take that and then I get the repercussions of that test so I said, you know what? We're just going to just have to deal with it the way best way we can. If they don't like it, I'm sorry. I wasn't, I wasn't told about all this. And if this was planned, I want to know who planned it, so I can have a little outdoor backyard barbecue with that person. That's a whole nother episode. You know, that's that's a whole a, other episode. Yeah. I swear, <laughs> this is a whole huge conversation. Yes. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> it gets so flat. It gets so flat. But yeah. I want to be at that barbecue too, please. <laughs> I'm I need to be there too. Before. I need some. Yeah, I need some video footage of this one because this is. I don't believe this. I mean, I was as a young girl growing up. I seen how my uh, my older adults, cousins, and family members was living. I'm like, okay, that's how adulthood is, and I was pinpointing what I wasn't going to do, what I am going to do, but I never planned anything because if I, if I planned anything, it doesn't go through. Oh, so trust I said, well, me, I'm, I'm with you. Anything. 
somewhere. I I'm scared like, to plan. Like, I'm literally scared yeah. to plan. Well, I said, when I get there, I'll just have to deal with it. And that's what I said. Just like I said, before I had my son, I didn't want to have any kids. So wow. listen to your words. God is listening to everything you say, think, pray, everything. He listens and he turns it around as your test. Yep. That's how I know this is God's test. Oh, oh all him. <laughs> so, so how do you explain to an autistic uh, young man the pandemic? Whew, that conversation. <laughs> Well, yeah, because I'm wondering, down. I mean, it's all about routine. So how do you expect, yeah. how do you explain that when we don't even understand? It, it, um, how can I put it? I sat him down. I said, listen, um, you know how we're used to going out in public? And we, I took him on a lot of trips. He went to Disney World four times throughout, before the pandemic, throughout his schooling. And his graduation gift was back to Disney World. So I had, I had that plan, too at the graduation so I'm like well no time like I had to sit down with them and just tell them I had to just explain it to explain it to him in his kind of kind of wording and simplified words we can't go because there's an invisible virus that you can catch a cold get sick or die and why I said it like that is because um we lost uh, my mom gained her wings back in 2014 so he had to watch her die in order to understand what death was. Um, that was that was the other thing I kept from him, death. But I said, well, in my mind, what happens if something happens to me, my mom, my sister, how is he going to recope? But by him watching me for seven years take care of my mother until she did um, gain her wings, he saw everything. So he thinks if he goes to a doctor now, he might get sick, stay in the hospital, and or die. That's in his head. And I didn't realize that he, because wherever I went, he went. So he yeah. saw everything. So my thing is he's scared now more than ever to even do anything because he doesn't want to go to the doctors. So that's a, another entity on my head. But um, I try and tell him, you, if you're sick, I, I'll take care of you the best way I know how to. And he's been doing really well for the past two years. Um He's used to going out and about on a routine to like when the bus was school, but since school stopped in 2020 of June, he, uh, for him is actually good because it's like, to him is like a little mini vacation because no more school. <laughs> you ain't got to get up early and do anything, but he still gets up on a regular routine, gets up early at, at like five in the morning Damn. and he goes to bed at, um, every night at seven. That's the, that's his that's his regimen five to seven. Okay, so so, yeah. so what does he do all day? Like, what do you have him do? We have life skills um, training. I do at home, like um, put, take out the trash, sweep the floor, um, make his bed up. Uh, we go to the. Hello. 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 Oh. So, sorry, sorry, um, you just you completely disappeared. Did I? Uh, yes. So, um, you you okay. the only part I heard uh, make his beard up, and then we do we do life skills at home, community outings for him to go out in the community and just relax right now because he's been on the go for the past fourteen years. I let him take a little break, a breather. So, but like when the plan was to get them into a transitioning house, right now I either have, I made to make it my like my if I do I, I want to buy a house myself to make our house a transitioning house for him to, to live at. I don't have to be there. I can just come there. You know, I, I don't know what to do. I'm I'm stuck. I'm doing a little bit of everything in my mind just to see what I can do. And it's just I'm just stuck in the, in the I'm just stuck right now. No, well, I mean, I understand that. And this is, uh, you know, now I, I always talk about it, that there is, there is help for disabled people or disabled, disabled kids and there's programs and all, but there is actually no guidance for the parents to teach them how to handle that kind of situation, what they're supposed to do. I mean, this is all learning by doing. And that's, uh, that spoke to me even earlier when you were saying, yeah, 
Um, I didn't know about the medication situation. I wish I had known before. Um, so, you know, where, where do you seek guidance? Um, I have uh, people, who, uh, not people, I have, a, a, I have a small support group that I actually, you can say, deal with right now, but we've not really known. It's just me and my girlfriends, we just talk. I do some research, they do research, we bring it together, and we, we tell each other about that. I do have a, um, what do I have? Let me get, I have a BSC that I can talk to if I need help. I do have resources I can go to, but right now with this pandemic, they want us all to be either vaccinated or have a negative COVID test. Mm. And those two things are not in my vocabulary right about now. So I'm just doing what I need to do right now is to stay home with him, uh, teaching my own life, life skills that I think he would need in order to, if something happens to me, he can do it on his own. That's what we're doing right now, our own personal life skills. This is very, very important, if not the most important thing. Um, but just like a, a, a little side note, um, don't they have over there those, those spitting tests? So basically you spit in a little, like in a tiny, um, in a tiny jar, and then that's how they test you. So it doesn't go into the nose and everything. I haven't seen anything like that. All I see is the one go go up the nose. Well, yeah. look it up, Google it because okay. they have them, you know? So that might be, if, if, if y'all have it over there, which I think y'all do, because why would it be over here in Europe, but not in the, in the States? I mean, I've never asked anyone in America to be, to be uh, honest, but um, I definitely ask around and you should Google it too, because that might be really okay. a good option. I'll look it up and see. But yeah, it's like way, COVID it's, spit it's test. That's COVID spit test. I'll look it up. But it's just, but T even with that, he doesn't know how to spit. I mean, I can tell him to do it like the, like he's brushing his teeth. Even with, he likes to swallow the, the the toothpaste and all. He has a he doesn't know how to blow his nose because doesn't have how to you know how we know how to blow our nose. He doesn't. So it's mm -hmm. like there's swallows it or I don't know how it comes out. With him, is is really iffy. Would he allow the, the test to go in his mouth to swipe the inside of his uh, cheek? It'll, that'll be a very uh, chancy. I, I could, I could, we could try that and see, but um, he doesn't like the, going to the dentist. Um, like I said, he's, he's, he's really not that doctor friendly. Even if you uh, give him like, uh, um, it sounds weird. I'm just, I'm just, uh, just thinking here on the spot. If you say, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna let this person swipe the inside of your mouth, and then you give him like, uh, you know, like something that he likes. I don't know if he likes any chocolate or anything that he likes, or, you know, just so. I can, uh, I can, I, I can try. It. I mean, I, I would try it out. I mean, I would try it if I had to, but it's like, I, know. I don't want to brag anymore. It's I like know. Bribing. It is bribing. It's not yeah. like bribing. It is actually bribing. <laughs> it really is. Let's we've be quite frank that. here. <laughs> we've been through that bribing stage because when he was younger, he has his own VHS, his collection. Oh. The VHS tapes of the VCR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has a, a collection of those that we had to, every time we go outside, he had to get one. So oh, okay. I was like, yeah, we, he, was bribing, he was bribing me to get a VHS tape so he can be good. So I, I said, no more. We got to stop. If I can sell those now, I'll be rich right now. <laughs> well, maybe at some point he don't like them and you can really sell them because that's really vintage. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so tell me about your book. You wrote a book. What is it about and what's the title of the book? Yeah, I have it right here. This is my book, Stand Up Resilient. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. Mm -hmm. Stand Up Resilient Black Women. This is an anthology of 18 authors of Black women um, telling their story with their faith. Um, mine is a little bit confusing after I wrote it, but I still wanted to get it out there. This, it's a start. Um, yeah, my chapter starts with uh, being tested, tossed, and turned. It's called Shattering Generational Curses, One Angel at a Time. But inside of it, I talk about being tested with, um, I, was, I was molested when I was a child. Being tossed is being with my son with autism. And then being turned around, how I got out of it. So it's three things. And, and, I'm gonna, and, and with the, the chapters, 
I'm going to go in and pull another book out of each one. So I have three books out of one cha one chapter that I'm, gonna, I'm working on right now. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. How is the how is the process? Like, how difficult is it for you to talk about all of this in a book? I mean, this is like really reliving some of the stuff. I'm actually okay with it. Um, the reason being, I, I sought out um, therapy. Um, yeah. Was this 2020? Uh, I would say 15 years ago, um, I had started therapy, my own therapy um, regimen. I knew I needed help one day, and I went out to call a doctor. It took me a year just to get help. When I finally got the help, it took. Um, I went through uh, an organization that, that a foundation that had good therapists there, and eight therapists left me two weeks at a time. As I'm telling my story. Mm -hmm. So in my head, I'm thinking my story must be either a, a death trap or something because they keep leaving me. I'm like, what's going on? I need help. And they tell me to go to a doctor or a therapist, and I do. And eight of them left me two weeks at a time until I found two people that stayed with me for two years each. And I got like kind of tired. They could be on medication. I felt like a zombie. I'm like, I don't need this. How can I be a zombie and take care of my son? That's not going to work. Okay. So I had to get off the medication and I even stopped therapy. I said, I'm going to do this on my own. I can't, I, if I can't find the help, I'm going to be the help. And that's what it's been like me, me against the world on my own. Yeah. And you're doing an amazing job. I mean, you Thank are you. resilient. You are still going. Um, you. Yeah. you are not just accepting the situation, how it is you are actually trying to make something out of it. And this is exactly why I told you I wanted you on a podcast because this is exactly the point I'm trying to make with this platform. Okay. Thank you for allowing me to do, um, express my, my feelings. That I, I, I went into the room and I'm like, I was, I just, I just went out. I just went off as you heard me. I, I just didn't know what to say. And each one I go into, I do that. I get the same, almost the same response. Like they don't understand what I'm talking about, but they empathize with me. I don't need empathy. I don't need sympathy. I just need some guidance on what to do because I don't Great. know. Great, so exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that's what it is, you know? What is sympathy going to do for me? Empathy, thank you very much. But after three minutes, we can get over that. So, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it's true. And it's not even, I'm not even trying to sound ungrateful or anything, but people go through stuff. They really need to give them even the smallest information that they can use, you know? Yes. Um, yes. So definitely that is, uh, that is the whole thing. So <clears throat> what is next? And I hate that question, actually, what is next? Because I always say, you know, these questions. So what is next? I mean, it could be nothing now and everything tomorrow. Like the world is not standing still. But what are you cu currently like working on? So you said you have three books and um, three so books, you in um, writing <coughs> process right now. I'm in the writing. I'm in the writing. Uh, yes, I'm in the writing process right now. Um, after the book launched in December, I um I, I got myself involved in a comedy production company. So now I'm trying to be a comedian. <laughs> to make okay. Laugh, to keep me to keep me balanced because mm -hmm. when I was growing up, you had seriousness, you had laughter. So I'm like, well, I might as well keep it going. I got this far. I'm I'm 50, so I might as well keep on going. And I'm like, I I had to find a um, they call it a niche, like what I want to get into, and mm -hmm. what I mainly want to get into is the uncomfortable conversation. One is about death, and everything else that comes with it. Because um, we get there and you get your mind blanks out. And that's what happened with me. Um, my grandmother passed in 1989 after my high school graduation. So I know about death fully from watching her die and then watching my mom take care of people. And then she watching them die. I'm watching her take care of them. So that gave me the compassion. Like, well, I, I, think, I, I think this is my calling. I'm thinking because I like to help people out. Um, I used to be a cashier, a uh, restaurant server. So my thing was to helping people stay happy, be happy, and have a good time. 
So I, I'm trying to find a cons I'm, I'm trying to find my niche. Um, if I'm a consultant, a compassionate, patient person, that if I can have a bottle to sell my patients, I'll be rich on that one too. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of patients to sell because I, I got this far, you know. So I right now the I next love thing that. Is, thank you. Thank you. I'm just doing whatever I can to keep myself going. Because um suicide is not in my is not in my vocabulary either. That's the easy way out. So. Absolutely. And it's not what God wants us to do. No. So. No. But um, no. how do you, how do you, or what do you do to have a private life? Like, do you have a private life? If so, how you balance it? Um, I make time for a private life if I need to. Uh, I used to do when, like, um, how can I just, I don't have it right now. But I have my time to myself to learn about me because I lost me, I lost me while raising him. So right yes. now what I do is I listen to music um, or I journal, um, talk on the phone with my girlfriends, get out of myself, out of my head and go to somebody else's head and just chill. Um, we go out on vacations, uh, me and my girlfriends, we have a good time. Even if we just go out for a dinner, it's something that I'm not doing at home. So um that's basically it. Yeah. Would you say dating is difficult raising a dis disabled child? Yes, because they, they think I want to, for, to be a father figure and that I don't want. Mm -hmm. I've been that father figure for 25 years. I'm going to stay that father figure for 25 years. I can't see no one else coming in, taking over or partially taking over. That hasn't, it's not in my head right now. I'm, if I had to deal with it, I don't know. I, I haven't. I haven't dealt with it. I just, it's, it's difficult, a little difficult. Yeah, I believe that. I mean, it's not even finding somebody to uh, um, uh, replace the, 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 the father figure or anything. It's more just like somebody who can have your back, you know, somebody who is there for you. So you can also have the chance to, you know, like chill or have somebody I, like, you I know. know how the, I wouldn't know how that felt because it, I used I, I have friends who would, come, who would come over and just be chilling with me but that, that'll be it um, there's no <laughs> one that really said I want to help you out take take you know take over or help you get to you get better you I haven't had that person come in yet so I'm just doing this on my own which is okay I mean I don't want to be a sad burden part person but I'm just doing with the best I can no, you're definitely not a sad person, I'll tell you that much, you know, and uh, this is definitely a challenge and a half that you're dealing with, but you're not a sad person, and um, yes, I think you should just, like, open up more. Uh, if someone comes, maybe there was somebody, but you just didn't see it because you're not even really paying attention. Just saying. <laughs> so, um, I I would like to hook you up with a with a, a a girl that was on the podcast before. She also has an autistic son that she raised on her own. I will definitely reach out to her right after, and if she's cool with it, I'll put you in touch with her. If that's okay with okay. you, of course. That's fine. I need all the help that I can get. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to do I want to do support. I want to do a, um. I have a nonprofit idea for me and my girlfriends to do we used to talk about doing, make, making a business for ourselves for our kids as a legacy so i'm trying to get into either a 501 i guess nonprofit 501k whatever that is i don't know i don't know anything about business i'm trying to I either go back to school for business i don't know that's why i'm on clubhouse now trying to find out what to do how to do it and it's Same just here. a lot of information is coming in <laughs> It is a lot of information, but that's good. You just have to really filter it and just like have to take breaks, you know. But um, um, Keisha, the other girl, she um, mm -hmm. she is into all of that. She has she started the business that she's running with her autistic son, and she's doing some some things. <laughs> okay, I think okay. it would be great if y'all could talk. Thank you. Yes, anything. Yes. I, Absolutely. I accept. <laughs> <laughs> that is Thank so you. great. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing your story. And um, yeah, definitely. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And um, 
yeah, definitely always remember that you are an inspiration to many, many people who do not have the strength to deal with a situation like you do. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Everything will be in the show notes, the link to the book, all her socials. If anybody wants to reach out or has any ideas or guidance or where she could get guidance, that would be really, really amazing if y'all could just like reach out to her or to us. Other than that, I will be back next week with a brand new episode.